One thing that really helped me out when I was in that CEO seat, I really view the real estate investing world as it's basically two different arms. I'm a big sports guy. So actually, I just relate it to sports. So basically, you have your offense and you have your defense. So you have the sales side, which is the offensive side of your business. And then you have your operations, which is the defensive side of your business. Hey, welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Eat, Sleep, and Invest. I'm your host, Brian Driscoll. I'm here with Brian Snyder. What's going on, Brian? Not much, man. So thanks for having me on here. I'm excited to talk with you and love the community that you've built here, brother. Hey, thanks, man. So everyone, this is going to be an interesting episode. Brian has a lot of experience as a CEO, right? You were a CEO at your old company? Yeah. So I've, I've basically, whatever you whatever you think you could do in a real estate investing company, I th- I've pretty much done it, I think. So I've thought about every position. That's why I think it's going to be so interesting because you've been in the real estate space running as a CEO. Now you're as a COO in another position. You're dealing with a lot of the stuff most people have troubles with. So, Brian, do this. Give us a little bit of background on what what all you've done before, and then we'll jump into where we're going. Yeah. So, yeah, real quick, uh, just a quick synopsis. So, I'm a former school teacher. I was a middle school math teacher, teaching sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. Got my master's, become a principal. Realized real quick, I did not want to become a principal because that's the worst job in the world. So, um, connected with my buddy Brett, Brett Snodgrass and got into the real real estate investing game with him. And basically, I just came on with him and started doing some marketing. And then I moved into Dispo, did some acquisition stuff, and then moved into operations. And then kind of really took on that role as like a COO and what that truly means. And then Brett actually moved out of the business um, into the more of the owner's box. And I took over the business for him as the CEO. Um, in the meantime, I was doing stuff with uh, Sharper Business Solutions, doing some consults, implementations, quarterlies around the nation with a bunch of real estate investors. Same time, too, we've been a part of Collective Genius for a long time. So I started facilitating some Collective Genius events at the select level and the premier level. And then they basically had a position open for um, a COO. And, you know, my passion is to really just work with people, just figure out like kind of what their passion is and help them go after this. So my passion is basically like helping other people reach their passion and figure out what the, what they want to be doing and figure out the best way to do that. Um, and CG just gives me an amazing platform to do that. So um, Brett and I kind of split up amicably, amicably and stuff. He jumped back into the business. They're doing great. I came on board with uh, Jason Medley and the CG team. So we're operating as a COO there. And now we just have this platform that we're just basically just trying to connect with as many real estate investors as possible that fit into our organization so they can collaborate with each other and learn from each other. And I love it, man. Yeah. Okay. So what, what's your why? Why? Because I, I know you're really passionate about working with people. Like, What's your why behind that? You know, I, it's it's funny. I've I think the last five years I really struggled with that because once once you're around like a bunch of entrepreneurs and stuff like that, that's what everybody's asking. What's your why? What do you want to be doing? And I struggled with that for so long. I couldn't figure out what my purpose statement was, or to have that perfect sentence or that perfect why. And I realized just within the last year, my why is just to help other people. That's what it's all about. That's what drives me. That's what gets me up in the morning. And if I can, if I wake up in the morning and I see on my calendar, I have a, a couple meetings with people where I can just like really dig into their business and help them out and you know, help them overcome something like that's, that's what I love doing. You know, I love helping my family and setting up the best stuff for them. Um, helping my wife's family, helping, you know, helping set them up as well. And, you know, me and my wife, I think we do a great job of just like really kind of collaborating with each other and just helping other people. That's what we want to be doing. And it's, it's, that's definitely my, why my purpose. I don't think that's the best purpose statement, but that's what it is, man. I just, I just want to help people. That's the kind of people I want to be hanging with. <laughs> what, what's your uh, predictive index? Promoter. Promoter. So, okay, cool. Yeah, so I'm basically, a, um, I should not be in the operations role, if we'll say that. So I don't have an operations background or operations profile, but I'm a promoter. But because of my transferable skills, I think from just being a teacher and being organized and I'm a planner and, and I'm, I'm, I'm pretty analytical as a math teacher. So I think it gives me the transferable skills to really sit in that COO role. Um, but I do have those visionary tendencies and, and that social, and I need that social aspect as well. Yeah. And you know what? And I say too, like, you're the kind of people I'd like to hang around with because like if you surround yourself with people that are genuinely trying to help other people, like everybody gets to grow together. It's not like uh, you want to be around people that are just going to help you out. It's like if you if you have a group of people that all want to help each other, it's like, okay, Brian, what would you what are your failures in the last 20 years? Hey, here's what I'm dealing with. What are my failures? And then we kind of like get to skip through a lot of stuff way faster through for business. Yeah, no, that's what, I mean, that's what it's all about is, you know, why not, why do you, why do you have to reinvent the wheel when you can learn from, I've made a ton of mistakes throughout my life and throughout, you know, real estate investing that I'm more than happy to share that with other people. And, you know, being around other people like that, you say like, Hey man, I want to hang around people like that. That's, that's what it's all about. of being able to connect and be able to relate with each other, but be able to learn from each other as well and help each other grow. So 
I'm definitely at the mindset of, I love the study of, I forget where the study actually came from, where, where, you know, I think it's happened a couple of different times where they take like, you know, the highest level people, like the smartest people in the room, like put them all in one room and give them a task, but then take people of like diverse backgrounds and diverse, just diversity across the board and put them in a room, give them the same task. That, that group of like diverse people from different backgrounds, different ethnicities, different ages, different, just different um, professional backgrounds and stuff, they're always going to outperform because they operate within different, they come at it from different perspectives. So I just, I love that mentality. So I love putting myself in a room with just other people and collaborating and, and working to come to that common solution. Yeah, that's so true. So, okay, so let's talk about this first. So we're, we'll get on the real estate side first, right? So I know you said building a firm foundation, like you recommend building a firm foundation before building a team, right? What does that mean? You know, it's one of those things of, we'll just take it like if you need to hire one person, if you can hire that person and bring them in, but already give them a foundation of what they're going to be doing, how they're going to be doing it. It doesn't have to be like all completely like perfect drawn out processes and things and all that stuff's going to change. But if you can give them a foundation of what they're going to be doing and an understanding of what they're going to be doing and some basis of how they're going to be doing it, they're going to be a lot more successful versus just hiring somebody and saying like, okay, we'll, we'll figure this out as we go along. That generally like rarely works out unless you're actually hiring for somebody that has done it before and they come in with that expertise. Um, so I just think if you, you know, basically come in there with that, with that foundation um, for your business of same thing, I, I related to that, oh, hiring somebody, but same thing with your business. If you know what your business is, if you know what your core purpose is, your core focus and what you want to be doing and what the, that long term or what that goal is down the road, that foundation that, that gets you there, like you're going to be set up so well for success with, whatever things you, whatever people you decide to bring on, whatever uh, systems you decide to bring on, or just whatever avenue you decide to take throughout that. Cause we all know it's going to branch off and you're going to end up going, you're going to end up going a different way and in some direction and stuff. It's not going to be perfect. It's not gonna be fancy the whole way. But if you, if you have that foundation that can get you to the end, that's the most important thing. We'll talk more like the guys that are doing just like a couple deals a year, things like that. Like the one man shows, what do you see in your experience when you know, okay, I'm doing too much and I need to start bringing in some help. Like, wh where's that point there? It's just when you start to ask, <laughs> it's when you start to ask that is basically when you're just, when you're over your head, when you don't have enough time to get to the things that, that you need to be doing. And, and ultimately you're going to realize it when you're burnt out, when you're stressed and you're just like, man, I don't just, I don't have enough hours in the day and I, I don't like what I'm doing anymore. That's the point where, you know, you need to bring on some help and, and get to that point and, and you know, get some support somewhere coming back to that foundation thing for you to have that foundation and you to, for you to get to the point where you want to be, you have to be doing what you enjoy doing, what you like doing and what you're good at. So when you get to that point where, man, I just don't like this anymore. I'm just not good at this anymore and stuff like that. That's the point where you need to hire somebody else out to hire somebody that can do those things for you. That way you can live in that genius zone is what we call it. Doing the things that you like and the things that you're great at. And that's just going to be a lot better for you. Now, there's always going to be times where you, you know, you have to stay in those rules for a little bit longer because you may, maybe you can't afford it or maybe you can't, you know, you, you have the capacity and stuff like that. But, you know, when you get to that point where you're just feeling really that you're burnt out and you don't like what you're doing anymore, that's the point, man. You need to, you need to get some support and get some, get somebody under your belt to uh, help you out with that stuff. Yeah. I like what you're saying too, on like things you enjoy. So I always look at it. It's like, I read this in a book. I forget which one it was, but it's like it's certain things give you energy certain things take it away. It's like, there's people out there that like doing the stuff you hate doing. Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. So and that's, that's the beauty of it is, is as you're looking for that person or whatever, like all you have to do is write down, that's what you're doing is if you write down to make a list of all the stuff that you do throughout the day, all the stuff that you like doing and all the stuff that you're good at, that's your job description. All the stuff that you don't like doing and the little stuff that you're not good at, that's the other person's job description. It writes itself. But that's it. I mean, that's what if you can live in that in that zone, then you're you're going to be you're going to enjoy it and you're going to be a lot more productive with it as well. So we're talking about the me and being a promoter like I need the social aspect. So if you put me in a room by myself for like five days a week, eight days or, you know, five days a week, eight hours a day, like I'm not going to perform well because I need some social aspect to be able to thrive in what I do. Right. It's the same with me, too. Like I got to be around people. Sometimes it gets overwhelming being around too many people, but yeah. like you got to be around them because it gives you energy and like you need that communication. But other people prefer to be in a room crunching numbers on an Excel spreadsheet all day. They don't want to yep. talk to people. Yep, you exactly. Know? So, and there's like you said, there's there's people out there that like doing that stuff. So yeah, yeah, you just got to find those people. Yep. I forget someone was talking about it. Might have been at a CG event talking about um finding someone to clean a house. I think it was. They were looking for a house cleaner and they were like super cheap like 40 bucks or something, like some silly yeah. cheap, like wonder why this person is doing it. And they just genuinely like cleaning houses. Yeah. It was just like a 
a side thing versus most people don't like doing that. You yeah. Know? That person, I remember that story. Like that person was literally doing it because that was their passion. They just enjoyed doing it. They didn't, it wasn't even, it wasn't about the money or about anything like that. It was just, they had time in their hands. They wanted to do what they enjoyed doing. And they, that's what they like doing for other people. Right. So, okay. So we got that. That's more in like the earlier stages in your career. Then you get to your career and you're starting to crush it and you're doing everything. How do you know? And like, what flags would there be when you need to start pulling people in to take like an integrator or a COO role and those types of things? One thing that really helped me out is I really view the the real estate investing world as as it's basically two different arms. So I'm a, I'm a big sports guy. So actually, I just relate it to sports. So basically, you have your offense and you have your defense. So you have the sales side, which is the offensive side of your business, and then you have your operations, which is the defensive side of your business. So how what I did to basically make me uh, put me in a better position, put the company in a better position, is I hired literally for that. I hired an basically an offensive coordinator that ran my sales team, and then I hired a defensive coordinator that ran my operations. And really what I did is I just worked, I worked with those two on the business and we did really, really well together. Everything underneath them, I helped them out. I was support and I did, I did that stuff too. But versus, I think a lot of people maybe have a little bit of trouble because they bring on that one person underneath them or that one helper that like they kind of put them in that seat to do, to do sales and operations and kind of be that all around person. But in reality, I, I kind of realized that I, th- I thought it was like two different people. So that's what I did. I hired for sales, somebody that could really run that sales division and run it really, really well. And I hired that operations person that could run that really, really well, too. So I think in my mind, by splitting that, I think that really helped our business out. And I think a lot of people, like I said, get stuck in that kind of position of where they just have one person underneath them. But that one person is not usually somebody can't do sales and operations really, really well. They can do it for a little while. But again, they're going to like one thing more than the other. And they're going to gravitate one way more than the other as well. That's a good analogy, too, because you're right. It's like sale. It's the different personality. It's totally different jobs. Yeah. And yeah, if you yeah. think about it, yeah. Offense and defense it kind of makes sense. Me and my sales guy, we'd have conversations like, "How fast can we run? How much can we score? How much?" We... And my, you know, the the operations first, my defense first. She was she was like, "Okay, wait, let's. We need to pull back here. We need to protect this. We need to do this." And you know, that's we were we were a bunch of sports fans, so it kind of worked out with our analogies and stuff. But I think it does relate to business because that's what it is. I mean, we 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 want to run and we want to do as much as we can on the offensive side of the business by generating sales. But we do have to protect all the assets too and make sure that we're protect we're protecting the business and it's the all the, the E&O insurance and, you know, payroll and all that stuff of like making sure that everything is going smoothly. It's, it's, that needs to just as much as detention at, or attention as the offensive side of the business. Sometimes it doesn't, but because we were in pretty, pretty good harmony between those two things, it really worked out really well for us. Yeah. That's, that's interesting. I'm glad you put that. I never thought about it that way. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about, uh, let's talk about CG now. You're with CG, right? Yeah, with CG now. So I've been uh, about seven months now full time. So I've been a member of CG for I think six years now. And then uh, I started last year to started actually I was just I was doing some coaching with a lot of the select clients. So within CG, we have kind of three different levels. We have Premier, we have Select, we have Elevate. So people in Premier are usually doing about 75 more deals a year. People in Select are doing in between like 30 and 75. And then people in Elevate are doing about 10 to 30 deals a year. That's kind of how we have it separate out, separated out and stuff. And through my working with Sharper Business Solutions when I was coaching, I was working with a lot of like select clients. And I just reached out to uh, Leon, the VP of membership at, uh, at CG. And I was like, Leon, man, I, I, I love working with, this, with these select level clients. Like if there's anything you guys need at CG Select, like let me know. I'm more than happy to help out and stuff. And he's like, well, actually, we're looking for another facilitator. We're looking for somebody else to come in and help, you know, kind of run a room at a meeting and help facilitate and do some of that stuff. I was like, man, I'd, I'd love the opportunity. So I did that and I loved it. It's, it's perfect. It fits right within my personality, like kind of running a room, facilitating a room as a former teacher. Like that's just, it was natural for me a little bit. And then it was kind of funny about a month later, we had the premiere event and Jason Medley, the owner of CG, he got COVID. So he was like, they called me up and said, Hey, can you facilitate a room? Jason has COVID. And I was like, yeah, sure. Why not? So I mean, basically fast forward about nine months later and I was offered a, you know, a position of a COO role and working with a team full time now, man, I'm just, I'm loving it. So it's puts me in a position where I can just like come back to that purpose of where I can help people and I can really like kind of focus on a lot of different people and, and help their businesses in a lot of different ways. So yeah, yeah, loving it right now. It's a great seat for you too, because like you like helping people and that's what the whole organization is about. That's really our purpose of CG that we have. We, I mean, we have a mission statement, we have a vision and all that stuff. But really what it comes down to is we just we want to be able to create a platform for real estate investors to come together, to be able to collaborate, to be able to learn from each other, be able to help each other out. And the community is what makes it work. So by us being able to create this platform of bringing investors together, like they really do 
work with each other, help each other. I know as a member, you've seen it too. And you've been a big contributor of uh, being a go-giver in the, in the community of saying, hey, guys, if you need help with your, you know, your PPC leads or your PPL leads, here's what you need to be looking at. Or here's how you should set up your Google. Like, you do an amazing job of that. And that's just one area. We have people doing that across, you know, across the, all the communities and stuff. So it's, it's fantastic. Still going for the belt. <laughs> not, not not quite there so i that i i don't man it, it's tough i actually i've never i've never won the belt myself so i've got uh i think i've got like second place like two or three times but i've never got first place yet so yeah yeah so so everyone listening so in a cg meeting they have they break it out into some different rooms where what do you call it? what do you call the breakout they're just breakout rooms right there's breakout rooms yeah so yeah all right so everyone's pretty much coming to the coming to the meeting and it's like hey you know what here's what i can really give value on my experience and here's what i need help for in every room votes on who helped that and brought the most value and they give a belt at the end of the meeting. Right. And it's interesting because there's so many people in there trying to like truly give away the secrets. It's like, it's not like most groups you go into, everyone's holding their secrets back. It's like, you know what, I'll tell you something, but I don't want to tell you too much. Cause I'm scared. You're going to use it and compete against me or whatever. In this atmosphere there's not because there's everyone knows there's, there's enough to go around and there's everyone's all across the country. Uh, but I just wanted to bring it up because the belt, I was just talking about the belt. I keep going for the belt, but I didn't get it yet. <laughs> Sorry, man. So I, you, you got that go-giver go give mentality and a lot of really good, uh, re- a lot of really good stuff in there. So I, I know you'll get the belt here sometime, man. Yeah. And it's really cool. Like anybody. So I know real estate investors, I talked to a lot of investors and a lot of investors are loners, right? So you figure I always look at, I always look at it like this, a real estate investor, what type of person decides they want to be investor? Cause you have the people that want to be an agent. I'm like, well, the people that I see that want to be investors are like, dude, I don't want to do that. I want to go lock down deals and sell a contract. It's like, I want to go be the thug of real estate, right? It's just a different mentality. It's more like, more like street smart kind of things. Mm-hmm. But a lot of the people in the group I see are like that. And a lot of people in just in the United States that are investors, they're just loners. So it's really cool getting around situations of like-minded people because you can be at school talking to your kids friends parents they don't have a clue what you're doing you're talking about netflix and whatever in this atmosphere though it's really cool because everyone's dealing with the same types of problems so it's, it's cool to bounce them off each other you know and that's the number one driver of bringing people together like that and it's, it's kind of funny so we just we just um launched this new product called cg elevate this year and stuff and there's basically for people that are doing between 10 and 30 deals a year like i said and not to be salesy about it and just kind of tell you the story but like we basically, we kind of offer two products with an Elevate. So there's like a one-time, like you can go to one event, a one-time fee, you can do that and stuff. But then you, or you can be have it, be on an annual membership where you get, you know, you're a part of the community. There's three events that you can go to and Facebook group and all that kind of stuff. But literally, the reality is we have never sold a one-time thing. Or we've never sold that one-time event because once people will get into it, what, they, what do they actually want? It's not necessarily about the event or this give that Brian Driscoll is going to give them or anything like that. It's all about the community. It's all about being able to collaborate with each other. And I think it's so important and I think it's, it's such a cool thing to do. And whether it's CG or real estate or whatever it is, it's just being able to put yourself in a room with like-minded people that can help elevate you. I know in my past life, I, I kind of like prided myself on being like the smartest person in my circle or you know, kind of being that, that alpha dog or whatever it was. But then, man, once I got into things like in the real estate world and CG, I realized like quickly, like, man, this is, man, I need to put myself around people that are a lot better than me that have been through it, that can help me out and really push me in life. And man, that's made, made all the difference in the world in my life of just my, my mentality, my, my focus, all that stuff, fitness, all that stuff. It's, it's, it's amazing. So that's what it comes down to, too. As I mentioned that is like, you know, we're, we're in there for real estate and to grow our businesses and scale our business and things like that. But the reality is, is like, I feel like I've got more personal stuff out of the community than I have even real estate stuff. I've got a ton of real estate knowledge and a ton of real estate gives and things like that. But it's, it's, it's the little things of coming off of last event. Like I like really focused on my fitness and connected with a couple of people and like have accountability partners from the group, from the community that have helped me out. And like since the last event, like I'm down like 11 pounds and that like feeling better, like feel better mentally and all this stuff. And there's been things I've been being able to talk to people about like my marriage and they get marriage advice or, you know, just little things. So it's, it's, it's the real estate stuff and the business stuff that we get from the community too, but it's, it's the connections that you make that can really help you in life. That, that, that's really was what going to make, isn't, that's what makes the biggest difference I think in something like CG. Yeah. And you're right too. Cause there, yeah, you get the real estate knowledge, you get to see what people are doing, crushing it, but it's more lifestyle types of a lot of conversations on health, family, things like that. Like, okay, you're crushing and making millions of dollars a year, but if you don't have any time with your kids, what good is it? Things like just, and people will call you out. Like they will call oh, yeah. you out 
just it, because you're sitting in with a room at a type alpha male. Yeah. Well, you, I mean, you, you talk to a, real, a lot of real estate investors too. I'm sure you know a ton of people that are super successful. Their bank account is like, man, is it is amazing. They got some, they got an amazing business, amazing bank account, stuff like that. But then they're, but they're getting a divorce or they just, they, they don't, they don't have a connection with their kiddo or, you know, there's a ton of stuff or they just, they're suffering from depression or whatever it is. So it's being able, like you said, being able to be around those people that are, they'll call you out when they need to, or be able to push you when you need to as well. It's, it's awesome. Another thing too, because you have you have Elevate now also. So you have Elevate, Select, and Premier, and uh, everyone wants to qualify for Premier. Right? Like everyone I talk to, I'm working my way to Premier. But I like how you guys have it structured because people in Elevate, they're all basically at the same stage in their career, so they have very similar problems. And then once they get to the 30 or 35 deals, the 75 deals, they don't have those same problems anymore. But everybody in the Select has those problems, usually around like systems, processes, things like that. And then once they get to 75 plus, they don't really have those types of problems anymore. They're trying to scale and like get bigger. So it's it's cool too, because everyone's segmented. Because I know a lot of people go to masterminds. It's like, yeah, you know what? I'm talking with this guy, but they're not at my level. Or I'm talking with these people, but they're talking about stuff that's totally not relevant for me. They're talking about millions of dollar deals. And I'm just trying to lock down a couple of deals this month. Right. So it's yeah. cool how everything's segmented. Or talk, talk a little bit about that. It is really neat. I think there there always is something of like you know the you know CG Premier is the that's the that's the OG of, of real estate investing masterminds and stuff, and everybody wants to be in there, and it's an amazing room and stuff, and I've got a lot out of it. But it really comes down to it. There's, it's different conversations that can be had, like you're saying. So in the Elevate room, like really the focus is is just how to double your deal flow. If you're coming in, and you're doing like twelve deals a year, or you know is one deal a month, and you want to get to that point where you're doing like, you want to turn it into a business. You you know how to do deals. You know how to make a little bit of money, but now let's turn it into a business. Let's kind of double that deal flow and get in there. That's what Elevate's all about. It's more a little bit more of a coaching, teaching atmosphere. Um, there's a curriculum, some blueprints, a little, little less masterminding, but more about coaching and teaching. So it's a really cool atmosphere there. And then you move into select, which is a little bit, I, I like to, that's quote unquote tagline is like scaling responsibly. It's how to kind of take that. Hey, now you know how to, you have a business. Now let's kind of let's let's get some hires under your belt. Let's kind of build this thing into what it should be and stuff, and really kind of scaling that business up to where you're going to get it into the premier level, where you can just take to the next level. And that's all about now. It becomes about like wealth and legacy and turning something into something you can maybe get out of, or you can like kind of turn the reins over to a COO or even a CEO and those types of things and stuff. So along every level, we're talking about you know growing your business and doing more deals and, and things like that, but. The common theme is like, hey, let's get you if you're if you're an elevate, like doing a couple of little things here or there, we can get you to select. Doing a couple of things in select, we can get you to premiere. Then all of a sudden you're set up for wealth, for life, and for the legacy for your kids and your family and whatever's needed. Back to like just surround yourself with people too. It's just just good because to surround yourself with people that have the same type of the same problems, the same thought. I mean, everyone thinks different, but it's like you got the same thought processes and things like that, you're you're gonna grow. Oh yeah. So every every has this. That's, I think that's the that's the toughest thing. I think with with seeing um, seeing people in CG or seeing people in other masterminds and stuff like that. It's it's that maybe that comparison trap that maybe people fall into. As you're talking about, like people have some different mentalities. Well, you know, this person might be okay with like going into debt this amount of money or doing you know running his business this way. But you got to figure out kind of what works for you. And you know, even though people have different mentalities and different mindsets, you're going to be able to find people that think like you as well and have businesses built like you. Because there's so many people in there that you can collaborate with, which is really, really cool. Yeah, and you're right, too, because some people are like, hey, you know what? I want to make a couple hundred grand a year and I want to travel and not work all the time. And there's other people. It's like, I'm going to 500 million a year and I'm going to yeah. work 22 hours a day. So it's like yeah. you got all the different people there. You find who you jive with and who has similar goals as you, you know? Yeah, 100 percent. Yeah, there's people in there that want that a little bit more of a lifestyle business of just to grow it, to put the, to take their hands off of a little bit. Then you have those people that are just like you know, pedal on the gas, your foot to the gas and just go as much as they can. And they're just stacking cash and, and building all the wealth that they can and stuff right now. So it's really cool to kind of see every, all the different aspects you go, you take somebody from the, you know, the bottom line of, of select all the way up to the, you know, the top producers and, and premier, man, there's, there's something for everybody in there. And it's, it's really cool to kind of see the, just the expanse of what that community has to offer. Yeah. What's really cool is too, just cause I'm an investor here in Pittsburgh, but I don't know what's going on in the country. You get a really good handle on kind of like where the market might be going. You can't really tell where the market's ever going to go, but you can get a handle on if everybody's experienced the same thing, you might need to pay attention a little bit more. You might need yeah. to pull back or get more aggressive, whatever it is. Yeah. 
I think that's a huge advantage for us guys in the in the Midwest of, you know, so I'm in Indianapolis, Brian's in Pittsburgh and stuff like that. So when we're good to these things and we're talking to people in Las Vegas and San Francisco, San Diego, you know, Salt Lake City, Seattle and things like that, what's happening out there, it's going to happen here in like three or four months. So it's always cool to be able to talk to those guys and see what's going on, how they're making adjustments, because we're going to feel it here in the Midwest a little bit more or a little bit later on. So it's, it's cool to be able to talk to people like that. And then also just like, hey. Brian, here's what I'm seeing in Indianapolis. What are you seeing in Pittsburgh? Like, what's going on? And call up Jimmy Vreeland in St. Louis and see what's going on with him, too. So you can collaborate with people across different markets that are very similar to yours or get feedback from people that are in markets that are a higher level um, to see kind of what they're doing and stuff. And then I always love that, too. That's the that's the point, the part that I love about giving back. There's people that, you know, are markets that are smaller than Indianapolis. I can definitely give them some feedback on what's going on here and, and things like that of what can what can change their business and those little things, those little tweaks that I'm making that can, you know, do the same thing in their business as well. That's pretty solid. So I like CG. I like, I like everything it's about. Hey, Brian, if somebody wanted to get involved and see if it's a good fit for them, what's the best way? Yeah. So um, if you have any questions, there's one, you can reach out to me directly. So my email is just brian at the collective genius.com. My cell phone number is 740-605-1883. Just hit me up or text me as well. Or you can just go to the collective genius.com. If you go to their website, um, you're going to kind of see kind of just there's an application on there. And the biggest thing is, is, you know, if you want to become a member, we are, you know, it is something that you have to qualify for. We want to make sure you fit. We want to make sure that we're a fit for you and that you're a fit for us as well. But you can go on there and fill out an application and then just have a consult, whether it's with me or with Leon or Jesse, we'll take care of you and uh, make sure it works for you and stuff. So that's kind of the easiest way to go about it. Yeah, cool, man. Thanks. Yeah, we appreciate having you on. What's your uh, what's your favorite book? My favorite book? Well, <laughs> it's a I, uh, it's a love hate relationship right now. So I'm I'm rereading Mult- Multipliers by Liz Wiseman for like the fifth time, and I just feel every time I read it, I just think it should be like entitled like how, if you want to feel like a bad leader, read this book. I think that's what it should be titled. So I'm rereading that again right now. But man, there are just so many positive nuggets in there. It's really cool too because I being a former teacher, I can always relate it to like this is what made me successful as a teacher and. If I apply those same things, it's honestly what can make you successful in business as well. But it comes back to being a multiplier and multiplying those people that are around you and kind of elevating everybody up and getting the most uh, the most out of them. And that's that's what really helps you out and stuff. So that's what I love doing. So it fits right into my purpose as well. Nice. Cool, man. Hey, well, thanks for coming on. We appreciate you. Yeah, no problem at all. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. All right. Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening. Get out there, crush it, close some deals. We'll see you guys next time.